If you are interested in uh, raising finance for your startup, um, or if you're a, an individual looking to invest in startups, then this podcast on understanding angel investors could be just for you. I hope you like it. If you do, please like it in your podcast player or in your YouTube player and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Welcome to Silicon Valley Trends, a free podcast series published by Silicon Valley Business School. I'm your host, David Smith. At Silicon Valley Business School, we provide affordable, real-world online business education to everyone, everywhere, and guide entrepreneurs towards success with their startup ventures. Today, I'm talking about angel investors. I'll go through the mechanics of angel investing, drawing on materials from our Raising Finance for Startups course. We'll discuss some of the leading angel groups, and then I'll tell you how I raised more than $20 million from more than 100 angel investors for one of my startups. So first, let's explain how angel investing works. Angel investors are essentially individuals with more money than they need, who invest in startups using their own cash. The term angel investor derives from the individuals responsible for financing theatrical productions. The movie and Broadway musical The Producers presents a story involving angel investors and the financing of stage shows. In The Producers, the financially unsophisticated angel investors are stripped of their cash through fraudulent misrepresentation by unscrupulous but hilarious entrepreneurs. As a result of such fraud and misrepresentation in the past, US federal laws were enacted to protect unsophisticated investors. Angel investors financing startup ventures must now have accredited investor status in the United States. An accredited investor is considered sufficiently financially sophisticated to back a startup venture and must have a net worth in excess of $1 million or annual earnings of more than $200,000 a year. Following the dot-com crash, there were severe down rounds, known as cram downs, where the angel investors lost their rights in the new low-priced refinancings. This disillusioned many angel investors and they switched into other forms of investment like real estate. Depending on the state of the housing market, and the tech sector, angels can switch between real estate and startup financing. Although many angels have seen their startup investments fail, and they're often re uh, referred to as friends, family, and fools, angels are an important and growing source of financing for startup ventures. Angel investors can do much more than provide seed investment. They can join the team often by taking a seat on the board of directors or the board of advisors. Angels are very useful at making introductions. Introductions to other angels, venture investors, potential customers, professional service providers, and others. Angels are often experienced in business and provide guidance to the entrepreneurs and managers. Angel investors with experience and impressive track records can add credibility to the team providing gray hairs and adult supervision to young startups. Like venture capital investors, angels follow the principles of the modern portfolio theory. They diversify their investments to mitigate the risk of any one investment failing to perform. The laws of probability mandate that although many investments may fail, some are likely to succeed. Participation in angel syndicates is an effective method of spreading the risk across numerous investments. In the angel syndicates, often one angel leads the round, setting the financing arrangements with the entrepreneur, while the other angels follow, investing on the same terms. Like venture investors, angels collect together in groups, and they flock. When an angel backs a company, others will usually follow. Word of mouth spreads quickly through the angel community. Sometimes the angels combine their funds into a single investment. Other times they each show up as separate investors on the company capitalization table. Some angels aspire to be venture investors. 
and several angel groups have developed into organized venture capital funds. A traditional Silicon Valley instrument for a seed stage investment is a note. It's a loan that acts as a bridge to a subsequent venture capital round of funding. The note converts to preferred stock when a subsequent round of funding is closed with a venture investor. To reflect the high risk involved in financing the company before it has venture backing, the note often carries a discount. So the angel investor may have, say, a 15% discount on the price paid by the venture capital investor. The other way of looking at this is the 50% discount is that the angels get 15% more stock for their dollars than the later to arrive venture investors. One advantage of this bridge, convertible note structure, is that it's usually acceptable to the venture investors. Venture investors are not scared away from the company as the angel investor invests on substantially the same terms as the VC. The advantage for the angels is that they get the same preferred rights as the venture investors. The angels are not stuck with common stock. There are disadvantages with this structure. Most notable, when the company proves unsuitable for venture capital funding and the bridge becomes a bridge to nowhere. If the company does not reach exit through merger, acquisition or IPO, the angel will be unable to liquidate the investment unless redemption rights were negotiated as terms of the note, in which case the angel can ask the company to repay the loan, usually with interest. From the entrepreneur's perspective, there's a difference between the duties owed to a shareholder and those owed to a creditor. With a note, the angel's relationship with the company is as a creditor. But when the note is converted to stock, the angel becomes a shareholder. Shareholder rights attach and the company has enhanced duties to provide information and voting rights to the shareholders. Traditionally, Angel term sheets contain a multitude of protections and provisions. This meant the term sheets were complex and difficult to negotiate with entrepreneurs. Then when the venture investors came in with a preferred stock round of financing, the terms that had been negotiated with the angel investors were washed out. Venture capital investors often ensured that the terms of angel financings were rendered void as a prerequisite before the venture round was closed. Some angels now offer entrepreneurs a much simpler term sheet, referred to as term sheet light. These simple term sheets usually protect the angel's interest by providing the angel with the right to convert to preferred stock on the same terms as the later venture capital investors. Angels adopting the term sheet light approach find their negotiations with the entrepreneurs are simplified, their interests are aligned with the venture investors who can't exactly complain if the angel benefits from identical terms as they have themselves, especially when the angel came in earlier when it was more risky. I came up with an alternative to the traditional investment structure and uh, posted the idea on a website I formed called startupbonds.com. It's a note with an option to convert to stock at a subsequent VC round, a merger, acquisition or IPO. The note holder also holds the right to redeem, to put the note to the company for repayment with interest after the company has become established and is generating sufficient revenues to pay the loan back. The advantage of this form of note is that the conversion is not dependent on a subsequent round of venture capital financing. Also, the angel gets to exit with profit if the company succeeds, but is not sold or goes through an IPO. From the entrepreneur's perspective, this structure does not require the company to issue preferred stock. So the founders give up little or no management control. The investor remains a creditor and shareholder rights do not attach. The disadvantage of this type of note is that it's somewhat unfamiliar to angels and their attorneys. So angel investments are structured as either convertible notes or preferred stock rounds. Although convertible notes are simpler and are often used for angel rounds under $2 million, 
Sophisticated angels often require preferred stock, even for smaller investments. Where a convertible note might be squeezed into one page, the paperwork for a preferred stock investment can run, run up to 100 pages or more. Series seed is essentially the same as any preferred stock round of funding. It was created as a set of documents by a lawyer who is now a venture capital investor. The paperwork is more streamlined, but it follows the same arrangements as we discussed in the preferred pizza toppings episode, essentially reducing the paperwork from 100 pages down to about 24 pages. That episode of this podcast series explains how entrepreneurs and employer, employees get common stock, like a bare crust pizza, and how venture investors get preferred stock with all sorts of valuable preferences, like a pizza with lots of fancy toppings. You might be surprised by how different these two classes of stock are. If you think as an entrepreneur you'd earn $5 million, if you held 50% of a venture-backed startup that sold for $10 million, you'd be wrong. And you might find the preferred pizza toppings episode to be quite enlightening. Angel investors over the years have developed a liking for the preferred pizza toppings, so they often use series seed paperwork for syndicated rounds of angel funding. That goes for the Band of Angels and the Koretsu Forum. Based in Silicon Valley, the Band of Angels has more than 165 angel investors. The band reviews more than 1,000 deals a year. In 2018, the band members invested in 23 startups. They invest in Series C or Series A arrangements, so they're looking for preferred stock like venture capital investors. With over 3,000 accredited investors, Koretsu Forum has a large angel ne investor network with chapters in various technology hubs all over the world and claims to have invested over $900 million in more than 1,000 companies. I just looked at the last 12 investments of Koretsu Forum and I see they're all structured as preferred stock and they range from as little as $25,000 to $1 million. Angels in these groups make their own investment decisions. They're not bound to invest in any company. They only invest in companies that they select and who want to accept their money and their investment terms. Typically, these angel groups have meetings every month or so and select a handful of startups to present at these events. Then the members discuss the pitches and decide if they want to pursue any of them. The groups usually have specialists in their ranks to perform due diligence on the products and the technology. So if they're looking at medical device startups, they have plenty of doctors and medical experts in their ranks of angels to validate that the demand for the product exists in the market and verify that the entrepreneurs actually know what they're talking about. If they're looking at software startups, they have plenty of experienced software engineers to draw from. Their investors come from various areas of business and have insights into different types of technology, so they can operate like a swarm. In fact, Corezzo Forum was based on something they call swarm intelligence. The words swarm, herd and flock all come to mind when discussing angels and smaller venture capital investors. Ben Horowitz, co-founder of the VC fund Andreessen Horowitz, joked, what do you get when you cross a herd of sheep with a herd of lemmings? A herd of venture capital investors. There are other jokes around Silicon Valley, probably coined by entrepreneurs frustrated by the herd mentality of investors who seem to be unable to make an investment decision without the endorsement and support of a group. One that I found interesting was the notion that investors are like penguins, all huddled together on the ice. They all refuse to dive in but when one accidentally slips into the water, they all dive in after it. And once the race is on to get in on the deal, angel investors and venture capital funds can get into a feeding frenzy. I discovered this firsthand when I was raising finance for my startup some years ago. 
I developed a pretty interesting product prototype, raised some finance from a corporate client to get started, and then we started to generate some serious publicity. We got coverage on various TV shows, all the TV news shows actually, all the major newspapers and trade magazines, and then one day the phones started ringing off the hook when we discovered Walter Mossberg from the Wall Street Journal had written a glowing review of our product and then discussed it on TV. I met with an angel investor in San Francisco. He loved the story. At that point, I'd set out to raise a round of preferred funding and our corporate investor had committed to take part of the round. I had interest from a small venture capital fund, but there was about a million dollars of the fund left available at the time of the meeting. The investor said he would take the $1 million that was available and he would invest the money that same day. I met him in the morning and he wired a million dollars to our bank account that same afternoon. That was a little bizarre, but this guy was well connected. He told his friends and set up meetings for me. I visited them for the next round of funding and they all wanted to jump in. I visited a former Microsoft executive at his fabulous home in Palo Alto and he invested. I visited an investment banker in San Francisco and he invested. The feeding frenzy in Silicon Valley had started. Soon it had reached the Pacific Northwest and New York. Bill Gates invested his own money, so did another Seattle-based billionaire. And I met a guy in a hotel restaurant in New York who immediately said he would invest half a million dollars. And he would wire me the money that same day. When I left the meeting, I was sitting in the car and he called me about 15 minutes later to say that he wanted to increase the investment to a million dollars. Once again, an investor I met for the first time in the morning wired me a million dollars in the afternoon. Then the focus moved to Asia. After a Chinese venture investor put in five million dollars, our business partners in Japan had a meeting with an accounting firm based in Tokyo. They set up a presentation to quite a number of their wealthy clients. I went over to Tokyo, presented the product, showed the TV press coverage we had from the United States, and then the investors literally lined up to give me their business cards. A hundred, more than a hundred angel investors standing in a big, long, uh, snaking line across the room all holding out their business cards to present to me. And the result of that Tokyo trip was that we raised $15 million from more than 100 Japanese angel investors in a single round of preferred stock, actually. When I was standing in front of that audience in Tokyo, I had a notebook and I, I kept it. I wrote the words, feeding frenzy on the notepad. It was a surreal experience. We had momentum. This was the key. The investors could see the excitement from the other investors. They could see that we had the endorsement of leading United States angels and the press coverage created an atmosphere where they all rushed to get their checkbooks. Of course, the herd mentality can be a real problem if you're not able to generate some momentum. You need to show that there's a positive buzz around your startup and your product. You need to show that you're making progress, hitting milestones, and then you need to win over those first key investors who have the power to influence all the others. These days, I prefer to bootstrap and fund my own startups. I don't raise finance from angels or anyone else. I prefer to keep control of my own companies, so I avoid preferred stock at all costs. I had some successes, but I don't want you to go away thinking raising finance from angels is easy. When you're approaching any investors, you need to be prepared to have lots of doors slammed in your face. This episode covers some of the materials in the Understanding Angel Investors section of our online Silicon Valley Business School Raising Finance for Startups course, where you can find more information on this topic. We'll cover materials from other sections of that course in future episodes, such as winning an audience with a venture investor 
and pitching venture investors. You're welcome to join me in my Silicon Valley Business School chat room where I can answer your questions. You'll see that we have other experts on venture investing on the svbs.co website. You can easily book a one-to-one -one video conference if you have any specific questions. I hope you'll join us for future podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe so you get new episodes as and when they're released. And please rate us in your podcast player, as this will help us get the word out to entrepreneurs and the other people we're trying to help with this podcast series. That's it for today. Hope you tune in to the next Silicon Valley Trends, the podcast for innovators and entrepreneurs.